won the uh, Pittsburgh versus uh, Philadelphia crew battle. Exactly. Didn't drop a single game through uh, through into top 32. Yeah. In Only fact, taking down, uh, taking down Mega, another newly PR'd uh, person from New York. So we're going to have to see if this Kukling can stand up to the nest of Syrup, this absolute prodigy of the game. Yeah, we've, we've been singing Yoda's uh, praises all day, and you'll forgive us for that. We are from his home region. But Syrup, man, this kid, ever since he's been able to come offline and start traveling again, he has been ridiculous. Just last week alone, I believe he top aided uh, Trade It in New York uh, with a big old prize pop bonus. So, you know, this kid, he's, he's the real deal. He's legit. He's been offline long enough and making as many headways as you could expect from a player of his caliber and his skill. Still gonna have to, uh, Yoda K is gonna try to make him work for it as awkward uh, as awkward a target as uh, as you might be. It's, you know, you're, you're just a big body, you're real heavy, a lot of combo potential, and that's yeah, generally bad news against a character that can press five buttons at once in the air, but uh, Yoda Cage is going to take the first stock, and at 47% no less. Play good defensive game plan here from Yoda Cage. When you think about Yoda Cage, Stu, you don't really think about, oh, ladder combos or, like, just, you know, combos in general. You think of, of trapping options. You think of the Mega Koopa. You think of the projectile. You think of, uh, you know, making you guess for 50-50s on that side B. The thing about Yoda is he's got a bunch of tech chase options that not a lot of other Bowser Juniors or Koopalings do in general. And on top of that, he uses the side B armor so effectively, like a wrecking ball tearing through Syrup right now. As you mentioned at that traded tournament, uh, Tri-State Summer Smash up in New York, Westchester region. I mean, coming in fourth place in that tournament, taking down people like Lemon T, Pharaoh, Guy Guy, and Mr. E during the course of that tournament, losing only to Miles and Jackal in that. Miles, a very underrated Yoshi, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I was commenting that set live. It was awesome. We're actually going to be seeing another Yoshi in the other half of this bracket, but Yoda Cage is going to make sure that Syrup sees no such uh, sees no such luxury as another winner's side match. Two stocks to one for the indomitable Morton of Philadelphia. Syrup's had a little bit of a break uh, between his last set and this one. You know, he's been trying to keep warm at the other setups as, as well. Here's the thing, though. He's starting to come alive here in game one, and Yoda Cage is now struggling to deal as much damage as he was sooner uh, in the match. Syrup right now starting to tack on that damage, very close to taking that second stock away. But Yoda Cage is now starting to turn the lights on himself. Fun fact, he picks Morton because it's the one that looks the most like an Eagles fan. And <laughs> going to the Nair, I am one, I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> Forward air, however. Syrup. Oh! Got an edge guard, Yoda Cage, and that's going to be stock number two. That was reminiscent of uh, the set in winner's quarterfinals uh, where Syrup actually triumphed over Mercury using that same thing, that same tail. Nair, oh man, just that's the thing. I oh, mean, no. if you ever whiff, if you ever whiff, you're in such trouble. Oh, he's going to be able to make it back, and now it's an edge guard situation. Okay, that's a heads up move making Syrup roll, but then again, you get to just kind of not interact. Yeah, you're giving up stage, but you get to not interact. You get to see what Syrup's uh, maybe main reaction there is to that situation. And the more chances for Yoda Cage to study the opposition without really putting yourself at risk, that's the better. Out. And that's going to be a spin out right into Nest. That's going to be healthier insurance, but that's going to be great for Yoda Cage as he takes game number one. That was a big play there. Towards the end of that match, though, Syrup definitely started throwing hitboxes in the way of Yoda Cage in general. You know, Bowser Jr. or the Kooplings in general are much larger hurtboxes uh, than you might expect. That that Koopa cart, while it, you do take less damage if you, if you get the hit on the cart, it still is a hitbox, and you do still take some damage. And, and again, the preemptive attacks that Syrup is throwing out have been a bit of a wall for Yoda, one that he was able to pass through in game one. Will he be able to continue the set going forward and do the same thing? It's a troublesome predicament here for Syrup, but the counter pick is going to be small battlefield. Do you like this? Uh, I, this is one of Yoda's better stages, honestly. However, I can see Ness having a lot of benefits here as well. It's a bit of a smaller stage, very similar uh, platform layout to Pokemon Stadium 2, and he just hit both those projectiles back at the same time with that bat. I mean, look, the, this this is this kid is not allowed to be in the Little League World Series. I know we're in Williamsport, <laughs> but nah, that's just that can't possibly be allowed. I mean, he's swinging with the best of them right now. Yeah, I know. Don't we're, let we're H fool you. This kid's a killer. Yeah, I mean, going up against a a Koopaline in the car. That's just absolutely a brutal matchup. And Yoda Cage making it look as such. 121 percent. 
the trouble is, I mean, even though, yeah, Yoda Cage knows that uh, the Koopa Links have some decent options in this game, it's, um, it's still a little bit of a problem having to even move with this character. You have to, like, the fact that he's followed this character from Smash 4, where it was decidedly, in my opinion, bottom five. Oh, I agree. Like, not even close, really. But, I mean, you carried so much over and did quite well to top eight in those tournaments as well. In fact, I believe it's the highest finishing Koopaling in Smash 4 throughout the game's lifetime. Uh, I don't uh, know if that's tournament. necessarily true, because I believe Tweak played the character for at the last a long year, time. In the last year. Oh, in the last year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, you good, you good. Yeah, yeah, no, I misspoke. That's my mistake. But uh, we chill. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Tweak, uh, Tweak was definitely a junior. But uh, <laughs> no, that's why he knows the matchup so well. Either way, it's going to be Yoda Cage catching that jab and Syrup just having trouble uh, getting a hold of what Yoda Cage is putting down. You know what it is right now for me, Stu? It's these slow projectiles. Covering the ground really effectively with the Mega Koopa and the Cannonball. While we have not seen a lot of the Cannonball connecting with Syrup, Syrup still has to avoid them. And Yoda Cage is using that to his advantage, funneling Syrup to go exactly where he wants him to. Yoda Cage and Syrup. Oh, he fell out of it. Oh my goodness gracious. Good SDI. That was utterly brutal. And yeah, it's just uh, one of the things you gotta be ready for it and neither player really paying all that much of a price for that interaction, which I feel like both players could be counting their blessings personally. Ever, but, ever since that game one, Stu, where Yoda Cage uh, got ledge trapped, or uh, edge guarded rather, by the PK Thunder tail to lose his stock after up being, he's been recovering high a lot more. And Surf has definitely been taking note of that and trying to capitalize on it. Yeah, it makes you wonder how much mileage you can truly get off of that. Yoda Cage at 155% now, not going to kill that hit of Nair, sending Yoda Cage the opposite way. But it's oh. going to get caught pressing the wrong button on the platform. That's not where you want to be. That's not where you live, Morton. Get back down here. I will play devil's advocate, and I will say that I think he was trying to uh, be reverse off the platform so that he was on the level of Syrup. Then again, don't uh. let that stock fool you. He does have what it takes to come back into this thing. Has a big lead due to a really effective ladder combo. He's looking for the finisher, uh -oh. but he's able to make it back anyway. And er, uh, Syrup doing a good job of saving that one off. Oof. Uh oh. Wait, hang on. Oh, uh, the back are not sour or not sweet spotting. Oh, neutral got up. Don't get your shield broken. No, buddy. Okay, it's going to be Syrup taking game number two. Syrup Man. does have the positive game count. At this point, it would be six games to eight in terms of ones that they played competitively. Two sets to one is the count for those of you who are curious in favor of the New Jersey Nest Main Syrup. But you're seeing now the counter pick is Kalos. I, uh, I mean, you want to open up the amount of space that you have to do uh, that you have to use. Anything that you can do to leverage side B, which is not only your main movement option more or less as Junior. But also, uh, just a great offensive tool wound up being the coup de grace in game number one. Anything that you can do to leverage that and open up the space between you and this flying psychic thunderball child <laughs> is uh, more than welcome. I think the big thing about this stage is it's, it's got an open middle, and that's really, really beneficial for Yoda Cage because those Mega Koopas are really hard to contend with when you don't have platforms to escape to. Granted, there are these platforms on the side. However, I feel like they benefit Yoda Cage more because they allow him to mix up his recoveries, go high, and not really suffer the consequences because he has ground under his feet. That means he can put up a shield. Now we've seen. Gonna shield the Mecha Koopa. Syrup trying to get in on the item play action. I mean, Yoda Cage makes it look awful fun. I'll give him that. But... Going to see now that side B, again, just moving on in. Jab going to send Syrup off of the stage. A slight lead, the slightest of leads for Syrup is going to be erased with uh, just a few hits of uh, few hits of up air and a few more aerials to follow after that. Triple digits for Syrup. Man, and I love that abrasive play that Yoda Cage went for off stage, going in kind of deep uh, when he really didn't need to. And Syrup was just a little bit thick deer, deer in the headlights there. Didn't know quite what to do to get around it. Get around it, he did. He's finding his way back on stage. It's a very, very even game. Uh, still slightly in Yoda's favor, though, because of the weight differential between these two characters. It's going to be the Nair now. That pushes Yoda Cage off of the stage. Winner of this one going to winner's final. The weight of this all too clear for both of these competitors. Yoda Cage has been waiting for a moment like this really for quite some time. It's going to be the back throw from the opposite ledge. Good little mix up there from Syrup. And yeah, it's a cavernous stage, but 
You gotta get your kills where you can. Sometimes you just gotta get a little cheeky with it. Yeah, and you know what? No matter what happens, if you get the kill, it's very fair. All's fair in Smash Brothers, babies. I was just trying to say ladies and gentlemen, but I ended up saying babies. And you know what? That is what most of you are. I mean, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> this team means anyway. So we're going to get Yoda Cage again. Okay, it's going to be the, the quick little tilt. Stick a fork in him. That first stock is done. Yoda Cage living at 89% and trying to pile on even more. Syrup right now, slippery enough to escape the cage as of right now. Currently in the lead here in game number two, or number three rather. And if he wins this one, he has a flex game, which means that if we go to game five, he will have counter pick advantage. I mean, it's such a huge strategic advantage just to be able to have that. And we saw, I mean, counter pick has been big, especially over these first two games, being able to establish your game plan. And we were talking about how good uh, Yoda Cage has been recently on small battlefield. Syrup still taking the game off of him regardless. That's going to be the uh, second stock taken off of Yoda Cage. That's not going to be nearly enough to kill on, again, a cavernous stage in Couches. Yeah, quite large, quite massive. Yoda Cage right now fighting from center stage with a rapid jab, putting his opponent up at about 80%, getting some more off it with the Mecha Koopa combo. Not a sweet spot back air, though. So all the percentage he wanted to get there, definitely not possible. And now comes the combo. He ca catches him out. He was looking for the finisher. He gets the wall splat oh and is goodness. able to continue further forward. The I mean, I just, the, the audacity of this kid, the temerity to even go for that, to even think of that. Syrup at 120 has a full stock lead on the Philadelphia Morton main. Recent graduate of Drexel University is Yoda Cage, and now he's gonna just go ahead and uh, poke the ball out there, nullify the PK Thunder, and... It's Super Armor coming in clutch uh -oh. there to survive that, Stu. And rapid jab. Why not? Oh, Why not? man. Dropped the shield for a frame, but not able oh, to get the finisher, and man. there's the back air from Syrup. Two stocks to one, or to none, actually, over Yoda Cage that match. Yeah, and now it's two games to one for, uh, for Syrup. Again, this Ness from New Jersey, who very recently coming on uh, coming offline, and over the past year, cemented himself as one of the best Ness mates that the world has on offer. And really just makes you wonder, I mean, this is a young kid. Yeah. This is uh, like barely in high school. What does he, actually might, might not even be in high school yet. Come to think of it, I, I haven't spoken with him, so I'm yeah, not, not I, uh, certain. I, I think he's, I, I think he's definitely high school, though. I think he's old enough to be in high school. Fair enough. Either way, like the, what we're talking about in this kid is just limitless potential, and exactly. already such great knowledge of the game, knowing how to manipulate uh, the game or to his will and his and its players. That's the more important part. Yeah. Like having, I mean, having a mentality this strong at this age is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And you look at his eyes, you know, no fear in them. It's all business. I mean, you play the game without fear. It's ultimately meant to be fun, and you know that Syrup is having the time of his life. It, that positive attitude is coming through in his gameplay. Yeah. It's showing forward. He's not afraid to approach Yoda Cage, of all people. Yoda Cage, who is one of the best players when it comes to getting rid of stocks early and forcing you to come approach him. Right now, Syrup is paying the price for it, though. A nice little ladder combo, uh, putting him up to about 97% and more. Forward throw to put him off of the stage. Yoda Cage, again, hanging on relatively, I mean, it's a sensibly paced game number one, uh, game number three, excuse me, four even, as it was in three on this very stage. Kalos, fun fact, spelled C-A-L-O-S, is Greek for beautiful, hence words like calligraphy. But we have been seeing nothing short of beautiful smash from Syrup, to matching the name of the stage, you could say especially as uh, is going to take that first stop. Yep, and right now the percentage window c continues to climb in the favor of Syrup. It's a little bit of extra damage on the board, but the lead trap from Yoda Cage is going to be staved off with a nice lazy double jump from Yoda or from uh, Syrup to get back to center. And right now Yoda Cage is just trying to find a way in. Syrup has full control of the stage right now, and, and Yoda Cage trying to mix up his options as much as possible. Oh. But Syrup still able to avoid everything. I mean, you got to... You gotta make yourself scarce. We've seen so many players get so oh, much mileage off of simply just not, people not being able to hit them. Yoda Cage is one stock away from getting dropped into losers, but Syrup, the opportunity presented before him, the spin out is going to bring that to a screeching halt. But you still have two more stocks to take there, young Ryan. Yes, and you know what? He can do it. 
If he gets one good ladder combo in his favor, he can get a heck of an extension and possibly take the stock away soon. The problem is that Syrup continues to mash, continues to throw out these big hitboxes, and continues to hit Yoda before Yoda can hit him, keeping his opponent in disadvantage state and also keeping himself in the percentage lead. Syrup has been absolutely grinding throughout these uh, throughout this month of July, and at the very end of it, after taking one, two, three, four first place finishes at tournaments throughout Central Jersey and beyond. He's looking to take another one here in Central Pennsylvania, and he will do so at the expense of Yoda Cage. Three games to one, and it's Syrup on to winner's final. He's keeping his run alive, ladies and gentlemen, and Yoda Cage has to bow down into loser's bracket where I believe we will be getting a run back between him and Icy Mist. And I mean, what a performance we just saw from uh, from the young man Syrup. I mean, just every single option that you saw Yoda Cage try to go for, trying to break, trying to solve Syrup as if uh, he were a puzzle. But every time it seemed like Yoda Cage was starting to get the answer, Syrup, knowledge beyond his years, was right there to change the question. Yeah, and you know, it seemed like Yoda Cage was having a bit very difficult time of hitting him at certain points. And when you're not hitting your opponent, they're probably hitting you. And hey, that's that's the big issue. You know, that's generally the game plan that Yoda 